May I speak in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. My name is Megan Kelly, and um, I'm the new director of the Episcopal Conference Center, ECC, as it is well known in our diocese, which is our camp. And um, though my work is up in the Burrowville area of the state, my home is here in Newport, which is where I grew up, and I'm happy to be back. I'm sorry to say I did uh, feel my first call to priesthood down the street at Trinity Church <laughs> as a young person, um, but, but this is my first time uh, preaching and being a priest in Newport, and I'm just thrilled to be here with you all this morning, and I'm so glad you um, let me be here with you. Mother Anita was gracious enough to let me into your pulpit specifically to talk about the comp camp and conference center. And uh, it sounded like a great idea at the time. You know, no problem, I thought, and maybe even said out loud. I I'm a priest and a preacher, so I can both preach the gospel and talk about camp, and it will be a great opportunity. But that was before I read the gospel. <laughs> and I'm not sure how many of you were really listening when it was read out loud, or if you spent a couple of minutes reading it before the service, but I've now read it many, many, many times this week. So I can tell you that it doesn't say much of anything that makes a whole lot of sense to me. But then John's gospel never really rolls off my tongue in the first place. I mean, this is a good solid Lent gospel. Not much of a pick-me-up, but then Jesus certainly never promised that he'd be all warm and fuzzy. This passage is a little funny because if you're actually reading it out of the Bible instead of out of the surface, service leaflet, you'll see that these verses in today's readings come directly after Jesus' triumphal entry into Bethlehem, into Jerusalem, excuse me, on a donkey. And for anybody who's keeping track of our church calendar, we're actually going to talk about that next week, right? But these are the verses that come right after. But, but I get it. The folks that put our lectionary together wanted to stick with a scripture that reminded us that Christianity isn't always a walk in the park and that following Jesus comes with some pretty high demands. And there's some transformation in it for us, to be sure, but we'll get to that in a couple of weeks. For now, there's a heavy emphasis on the sacrifice. So we end up here this morning with this whole if you love your life, you lose it, and the grain has to die, and the judgment has come, and finally a little bit of, oh, by the way, I'm about to die. And, and it, I get it. It's cool. It's Lent. This is a great passage for Lent. It's just not really conducive to, and now I'm going to talk about summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> but if I've learned anything... It's that if you're waiting for God's clarity and inspiration, you just have to keep going back to the source over and over again until you get it. So I just kept reading this gospel again and again. And eventually, eventually, I heard what Jesus was saying in a language that makes sense to me. And this is what I heard Jesus say. Jesus said, you must be willing at any time to let go of who you are for who you might become. You must be willing at any time to let go of who you are for who you might become. I'm pretty sure that's what John meant to write. <laughs> now, many of you have heard something like this before, and it wasn't in the Bible. To be honest, it's a combination of a couple of different quotes from a couple of very wise people. But this is how I heard it and how I heard it come from Jesus this week. So I went ahead and mangled the quotes for my own purposes. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is what this gospel said to me this week. And this is what I offer you. You must be willing at any time to let go of who you are for who you might become. It's so simple that you might miss how significant it is if you aren't careful. And it might be why Jesus or John or somebody felt the need to put in all those extra words and metaphors. Because sometimes letting go of who we are feels like death. And sometimes there's nothing scarier than standing on the edge of a cliff, getting ready to jump off and throwing our arms back with reckless abandon and saying, here I am, God, carry me. It's so scary, most of us can only get there a couple of times in our lifetime if we're lucky. So we need a constant reminder, and we need it in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, so that maybe one of those times we will really hear the message. We must be willing at any time to let go of who we are for who we might become. And now I can talk about camp. 
because I was nothing but a scared little kid the first time I went to camp. I wasn't scared because it was a sleepaway camp and I was going to be away from my mom. I think I was 12. But I was scared because I was 12. And I lived in a world that battered me with different versions of who I was supposed to be. I looked to everyone around me for authority on how I should dress, speak, feel, and act. And then when I couldn't quite get it right, when my pants or my shoes weren't just right, or when I was made fun of for something that I said, I thought there was something wrong with me. I was like a boat just being tossed around at sea with the winds and the waves, and I had no anchor. My parents loved me. They did the best they could. But two people alone cannot protect a child from this big, confusing world that we live in. And so one summer, the best my mom could do was to ship me off to summer camp. And you know, I kind of hated it. I mean, I didn't hate it, but I didn't instantly love the place. It was, it was so-so. But I made this one friend. She was in my cabin, and she was kind, and she was loving, and she was enthusiastic, and she was inclusive. And there was something about my friendship with her that was different from any of the friendships I had at home. So when she made me promise to come back the following summer, I did. I have a friend from seminary who says, I'll try anything twice. And though he's usually talking about food, I actually think there's some significant advice in there. <laughs> because my second time at camp, my life changed. My friend was there like she promised she would be, and she helped me see more people there and more friends. We started every day with Eucharist that was joyful and upbeat, and we ended every day with the quiet service of Compline, and the space in between was sacred. One day while I was walking across the field at camp, I stopped dead in my tracks and thought, now I know there is a God, because this place could not exist without one. So I just kept going, summer after summer, and even though I continued to wrestle with the daily complications of being in junior high school and high school, I had this sanctuary where I could go and feel loved and supported just for being myself. When I was at camp, I didn't have to try so hard. We could love one another in a way that somehow we weren't allowed to love one another in real life. My days and weeks at ECC helped me to have the first glimpses of who I might become. At school, I was annoying and obnoxious, but I didn't have to believe that because at camp, I was generous and friendly. At school, I couldn't measure up to what my peers were doing. I didn't play sports, and my grades were nothing to write home about. But at camp, I could clap and dance and sing and be a full part of the experience there. At school, I was nobody. At camp, I was a child of God. And it took a while. But eventually, I gained enough confidence in myself in camp that I was able to take that version of me back out into the real world. And I am certain that my experiences at camp and the friendships that I still have from that place are what has helped me to realize who I might become. As a teenager, I was given the gift of being able to let go of who I was or who I thought I was for who I could become. And that's why I have this job now, all these years, after, and after a really wonderful call as an assistant rector at a parish in North Carolina. I'm doing this job because a place exists right here in this diocese where young people are granted permission to be exactly who God created them to be, without fear of scorn or shame. And I want to be a part of that. Our camp doesn't offer what so many camps do. We aren't a sports camp. You can't ride horses there. There's no archery. There's no high ropes course. It's not band camp or math camp or football camp. It's just a place where you go to love and be loved. You go to ECC to discover who God intended you to be. And that's totally countercultural right now because loving God is not a skill that you can put on a college application and knowing that God loves you won't necessarily help your grades improve and learning to love others might not help you accomplish anything, but it might. So here's what I need from you. First, I need you to know about the camp. I need you to know that what we're doing there is so important, and I need you to trust me when I tell you that 21 years after my first week at camp, young people are still experiencing God's incredible love on that old farm up in Pasco. Second, I need your prayers. 
Because whether or not you or someone you love has spent any time there, ECC is a ministry that belongs to this entire diocese, and your prayers will carry us in our work there. And finally, we need your children. And I know some of you might be thinking, just a guess, my children are not going to camp anymore. <laughs> They're all grown up. <laughs> but I mean your Emmanuel children. We need you to encourage your young families in this congregation to be willing to do something countercultural, the same way I trust Mother Anita encourages you to be countercultural by making God a priority, by being willing to give of your time and your money and yourself in order to be transformed. Sometimes our gospels aren't very clear to us. Sometimes there are words or metaphors that we can't easily make apply to our lives right now. But our gospel is perfectly, perfectly clear about the fact that our Christian life is about transformation. I am convinced that transformation is taking place all the time at ECC, and it remains my great hope that through our camp and through this church and through this diocese, we will continue to be a people transformed, willing at any time to let go of who we are for who we might become. Amen.